So I had long hair for six years. I decided six years ago when my mum said, you know, regularly get your hair cut. And I walked into the barbers and I sat down. I thought, no, I don't want to fucking cut my hair. Could you say to? And I grew it for six years. It was so long down to my belly button. I had six colours in red, yellow, pink, blue, orange, purple and green. And then I was working for Domino's and I suddenly decided to cut it all off. And I thought, fuck this, because I wasn't the same person as I was six years ago. Do you think that in order for people to truly find themselves, they have to go naturistic, like they have to grow their hair, stop using man-made shit, just to understand that there's more to life than just this man-made bollocks i think it's i think it's important that they go their own way that they stop doing what's not them that's that they don't have to go do something specific they have to stop doing everything that's unauthentic you know what i'm saying and so yeah um i stopped gone like i can't tell everybody to grow their hair to find themselves because uh, maybe they've already grown their hair, you know, <laughs> and they didn't find themselves. Or maybe they found themselves, you know, Who, who's saying that not everyone has found themselves. I found myself a minute ago. It looks like you found yourself a minute ago. I think we're on like, we're all on different pages, different chapters of our own lives, you know. And it doesn't matter what age we are. It's like a journey that we go on, <laughs> getting all you know, mystical on you. It's like a journey that we that we go on and uh, it doesn't matter what age you are, it depends on you and when you go on it. And what when you when you hit it up every day. And so yeah, man. So that's interesting, bro. It's interesting, yo. I could totally see you with a rainbow like this unicorn like mane going on. That's lit. I like that. Yeah, so I used to have it up in a bun. So I originally, I initially had the David Getter look, right? That kind of just like a scrunch at the back. And it just grew past that. It grew to like, what the fuck do I do with this? So I put it up like a turban. It was just like a bird's nest. My friend used to say to me, I've got a bird's nest on my head because it was just like this round bun of just hair flopping down. And it was really cool how the colours just like interlinked and mixed with each other and I braided it so the braids mixed all the colors together that was pretty cool but then I served my purpose I got no women everyone thought I was gay because I, <laughs> I just no gays looked me up inside they had a stubble and there's me just with this long rainbow hair um so it was good because it allowed me to express my differences be free think and create and you learn to handle people's judgment people's negativity people looking at you talking about you you become numb to that feeling like <clears throat> if you don't know someone speaking about you if they are you feel their energy whether you know they are or not so you become used to just people looking at you where it becomes a default feeling of when you go out people are looking at you and then to the point where you're normal again and you just that feeling of people looking at you, you can cope with it because a lot of people trying to be different, they know people are looking at them and they don't know how to cope because they're trying to find themselves and erase their energy to absorb negative energy. But from working in a restaurant, I worked at a Nando's restaurant, most popular restaurant in the whole of the country in England, right? I had long rainbow hair. I had hundreds of people looking at me, talking about me, oh, six, nine, you know, because there's the guy with six, nine with rainbow hair. I had loads of people looking at me, talking about me. I could see them. I could feel them. I became used to it to the point where when no one's thinking about me and speaking about me, it feels weird. It's almost like being a celebrity and then no one knows who the fuck you are. No one cares anymore. And yet you don't <laughs> have this attention. But in reverse, because I never knew they were there anyway. But um, it's a good way to get used to energies out there. Putting yourself out there, facing that hit criticism and people saying, why is he wearing that for whatever? You become numb to it and you become enormous in power. For anyone, how much negative judgment that any human could possibly have because you're a fucking unicorn in the middle of a field full of like white sheep. So if everyone's spoken about you, so now what? There's nothing left to do in life. You can have spots, you can have a beard, you can have one leg. You're used to that judgment. Yeah, you're basically talking about the natural life path of a ginger, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's same, same type of thing. A ginger person out of everyone who's got dark hair, blonde hair, you, you feel like you don't fit in because you don't. People are 
judging and noticing they are but you have to learn to adapt and cope with that like I'm always always a black sheep growing up and I had to learn very quickly that I'm not the same as everyone and I can either sit there and put up with it or go and live in the mountain as a monk realizing I'm gonna have to come back to civilization one day I might as well expose myself and get used to that people looking at you and you do naturally adapt to it people were looking at me when I had long rainbow hair and you just get used to it and then you don't care anymore because they don't care that's exactly how I feel. That's why I wear a satchel every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got this guy right here, right here, and I don't give a fuck what anybody says. My hair is beautiful. That's for sure. And, Speaking uh, about yeah, that fanny pack, like, right? I used to go clubbing with the fanny pack to say, fuck you. Who says you can't wear a fanny pack? Who says you can't wear clubbing? So I remember one time right. I used to go there with my phone and my keys and my shit in my fanny pack. And um, because it's just... No one wears a fanny pack. But what's interesting is, right, you've got, like, these Nike weed fanny packs, like these Adidas bags. They're over-shoulder fanny packs. Adidas. They're essentially a fanny pack, but they're over the shoulder. But because it's over the shoulder, it's not a fanny pack. It's like, fuck off of your bullshit. So I went clubbing with my fanny pack to the point where I wasn't even aware that I was trying to purposely show I'm wearing a fanny pack. I was just wearing it because... It was convenient. So the mindset was different. I wasn't trying to be like, hey, I've got rainbow hair. I'm more confident than you. Fuck you. There wasn't about that. I was just wearing a fanny pack. And the point about being different on purpose just wasn't there anymore. I was just being me to the point where I don't really care what my hair looks like. As opposed to before, I was always like, oh, my God, does it, does it look a certain way? I just started not to give a fuck. And I saw it from their point of view, looking at me, which is just I'm a person with long hair that's messy. Like a woman who just puts her hair up in a bun. Whereas just because it wasn't in the style that I wanted it at, that's irrelevant. They're just seeing me with the messy bun. So again, how you see yourself is not how others see you. Um, but it's, yeah, I learned to cope with people looking at me to the point where I don't care anymore. I'd go outside naked, couldn't give a shit. Yeah, no one's going to see anything the same way. Um, that's why it's important to not give a shit what other people think about you. It's... It totally matters how you look at yourself, though. You got to look at yourself in a high light. I love being around people with high self-esteem. I love, I love having confidence. I, I know what it's like to not have confidence from when I was younger. But when, you're, when, you, when you have self-confidence, like, you do do the shit that other people would not do. You do do the shit that other people would not do, and... They would be miserable and you would be enjoying your, your time. You know what I mean? But I just really, I, I really uh, value confidence. I think it's incredibly um, important for people to, if they don't have it naturally, to learn about it, to develop in, in themselves. Because you just aren't living. You just aren't living if you don't have that confidence. You're like probably dealing with a lot of mind games that are keeping you from being the person that you want to be. You know what I mean? Um, that's interesting, bro. I like that. I like that. You, you're like, you're like in a new chapter of, of your swag right now. You know what I'm saying? Like you used to have rainbow hair. That's sick. Now you're like all black. You kind of look like a captain of a pirate ship right now. Like you, you've been, you've been merchanting from coast to coast on your ship. And, like, you've been selling and, like, buying, like, zebra hides and, like, treasure and, like, paintings and stuff. <laughs> uh, what kind of stuff are you into, bro? As in, <clears throat> what, music like, or? Like, what interests you? Everything and anything. I love life. I love everything. I go for walks. I speak to the animals. I see the animals. I lie on the ground and they come up to me. Like middle of London when I lived there last year. I went out at two in the morning on the hottest day of the year. Just some random street. There was foxes everywhere. I just sat down and then they realised I wasn't a threat. Then they would come up to me. Baby foxes just come up to me. Uh, I just love everything. Um, I love all types of music apart from heavy metal and rock. Um, I just love everything. Animals, nature, plants, the different types of plants. Just love it all. Like, I'm here and then I'm going to die. So I'm just going to enjoy every moment as if a car's going to run me over. People say that's negative. No, that's oh, that's that's um, that's um realistic that a car could just mount the curb and kill me. And no God's going to stop that. So I know that I could die any minute. A tree could fall on me. So I'm going to really enjoy that last moment. And hopefully a car won't kill me or a tree won't fall. But you've got to understand that there's certain things in life you cannot run from. 
no matter how positive you are, God ain't going to do shit if a man's in his car wants to fucking run you over. Um, what is interesting is that all my life I've known that people are speaking negative behind my back. But what's very interesting is that I've never heard it. It never gets back around. So, for example, if you've got somebody who's always bitching about people, often they bitch about them and it gets around that this person said this. But because I'm a good, genuine, pure person, but just misunderstood by people, people aren't talking about me in a negative way because I'm a bad person. They're just talking about how different I am. But naturally, everyone admires my confidence and my difference. So I know when I'm in a room and I'm being my flamboyant, powerful self, right, that <laughs> people are going to be like, God, he's fucking crazy. God, he's weird or whatever. But it never gets back around to me ever because deep down, as much as they're talking about me in the group because everyone's talking about me in the group, they're only talking about me to fit in because they don't want to be seen as the one as who likes that type of difference. But individually, they're all thinking, fuck, I wish I was as confident as him. So it's interesting. If I was a prick, I'd be a prick to people. They talk about how much of a prick I am and it get around to me. But because I'm a good person and they're speaking about me in a way that I'm different and I'm weird... They're not saying it maliciously. So it never gets back around to me. And because I know how it works and I've grown up with this, I befriend everyone because I know that if you are friends of each person, they will fit in and say, yeah, he's weird, whatever. But he's a really lovely person. It counteracts every single time. So they don't funnel that talking about somebody because they're friends of me and they feel guilty. So they'll be like, a new person will come in the group and they'll be like, God, he's really weird. And everyone else will sort of be like, yeah, we know, but that's Oliver. And then they'll kind of just move on. Whereas if I was a prick, they'd be like, yeah, he's a fucking idiot. Like he did this and did that. <laughs> Whereas because I'm a good person, it just sort of, the conversation goes on to the next bit because they all know me on an individual basis and they they get me. So um being yourself and being genuine all the time really pays off because I don't know the last time when I heard somebody speak about me even though I know people do just because I just I just know it but it's very interesting when you imagine like looking at it from a third perspective when you leave the room what do they say I know what kind of things they would say I don't know exactly but you know the type of things they would say god look at his hair it's fucking looks like a homeless tramp you know you know they say that not necessarily in a bad way that's just what they say you're used to it but then if they know you as a person it's like yeah man well that's just him and it moves on you know what i mean yeah man weird is good we all know this now you know <laughs> new era bro how long ago did you cut your hair oh it must have been about eight months ago um yeah eight months ago i cut all my hair just shaved it all off um shaved it all off as I said, the few days before, literally, I was thinking, how the fuck can I ever cut this off? I love this hair. I'm going to be on Jimmy Fallon's talk show with this long hair, get more attention. And then I just shaved it off. And that feeling wasn't like, fuck, what have I done? It was just, it felt right. It was right. Uh, as I said, you go through phases in life. Like, let's say you were 19. I don't know how old you are. You're 19. You connect to nature. You go traveling. Everyone else has, everyone there has got long hair, long beard. You follow that culture. And then it's just like, why have I still got long hair? I'm not with those friends anymore. I'm not on holiday. I'm in a factory putting shelves on a the fucking stuff on a shelf. And you suddenly think, wow, I haven't realized that I've just continued that pattern. I've not realized that I am a different person then. And then literally you just feel right. You go into like a shift of consciousness and you just shave it off and you feel fantastic. It's not a loss. People hold on to things. They're letting go of their old self. But really, if you've evolved, you are becoming in tune to yourself and it's not a loss. And, and as I said, you don't know when you get the urge to shave it off. You will at some point. could be tomorrow. It could be in five years. You don't know. You'll just get the urge that it feels right and you'll feel fantastic. Or not. Or not. Depends if you've evolved or not. <laughs> you got to you gotta follow your intuition. Whatever your intuition tells you in the moment, that's that. That's when it's going to feel good. If you just do it, if you're like, if you're like, oh, fuck this. You're probably going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. But, no, this, this, never going, bro. No, it's becoming something new. It's becoming something else. But it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. Although, I could, like, shave my beard. Just, like, shape it. I kind of want to bring it down. Do a little thing right here. I haven't, I haven't shaved this since 2019. 
29. Oh, okay, that's about a year ago. It was a long um, time ago. So I know, for example, I will probably have long hair again just because I know things go back around. Everything always has a full cycle. Um, I look at the back of your hair and how the hair goes up. I loved that because I just, I just loved it. Again, for me, it was good while it lasted. When I shaved off my hair and I looked on the floor, I didn't feel anything because I was ready. Um, but then again, everyone evolves differently. There's no timing. There's no, there's no rules. It's just energy. And if it feels right to do something, it's like if it feels right to stick a finger in your ass, do it. If it doesn't, don't. There's no wrong or right. It's not your gay if you do it. It's just if it feels good, do it. And if it doesn't, then don't. It's just like <laughs> fucking have a Chinese, have an Indian, have a McDonald's. Do what you want. There's no rules. Literally. Yeah, if, we, if you have the, that's interesting. If you have a desire to do anything, anything, if it's the smallest thing, like if I have the desire to go for a walk right now, like I better go do it. Because if I don't listen to that desire, that urge, that little subtle, just like what that is, is actually my intuition. If I want, if I feel inspired to go and do something, I should go do it because there's possibly something waiting for me there. There's possibly something in it for me that is for me. And if I don't, then I don't meet that. I don't reach that point of my life. You know, I stay still just like, like you just don't live your life that way so like there's literally these subtle invisible you can just barely feel it urges that are desires in the moment they rise up and you want to listen to that and do that it might be a little step just a small step that you have to take and that's you listening to your intuition in case you don't know what that is but i'm sure a lot of people listening are in tune with their intuition and like that's as simple as it is it's literally that urge that simple like oh i want to go have a sip of water right now but anything whatever you do desire because like life is really limitless life like for everyone is limited but because there's everyone and everything that's pretty limitless so life itself is infinite you know what i'm saying we live like limited lives, you know, it, like finite lives. But like, there's so many, so many lives that 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 makes it infinite. You know what I'm saying? So like, for you, it's unique, and for you, you'll have different desires than what the what what the mo- most amount of people will think is normal. And you shouldn't feel ashamed. You should actually go and like test the waters. See if that urge leads you somewhere that you want to go. Even if it's sticking... What did you say? (laughs) Even if it's sticking your finger in your butt. I have nothing to say about that. But I'm not going to shame you if that's what you want to do. But you want to follow those those subtle... Those urges. Those (laughs) urges. And just see where it leads you. Because it could inspire you to do more of what you want to do. And be more authentic to yourself. Go out and buy a dildo. <laughs> I can't um, tell. I can't tell anyone to do what I desire to do and what I have done. Like I can't tell anybody. Like you should do that. Like no, because they might not be able to do it, and they might not want to do it, and they may not benefit from it. So like literally, we're all unique like that, and you got to follow your own urge, and that's where you can pick up your own personal power and uh, live your life and be more confident. And uh, just, like, really embrace the rest of your life and, like, the newest year, 2020, and really make it something that has never been before. But I'm sure that a lot of people are connected to their intuition more than ever before. I'm really sure of it. So th- <clears throat> three analogies came into my head. First one was a maggot going towards a uh, a bin, right? Second thing was... Um, uh, an, uh, a, a seed going towards earth before it sprouts same vibration or the, the, but the thing I'm going to come to is that have you noticed when, a, when a, a dog gives birth to its puppies they're blind right how do all those puppies know where the nipple is they just they just move and then they find the nipple but they're fucking blind so how do they know that oh, it's that feeling blind. that that feeling, that urge, knowing where to go. When you suddenly get the feeling to go for a walk, 
you might always go for a walk and you might like nature but when you get that urge at a random time or specific time there's a bigger meaning there's somebody on that walk you're going to cross paths with that you've thought about or they can help you get to the next stage of your life. If you suddenly get the urge to get a McDonald's, it's not because, oh, I like a burger. It's because there's probably someone there, a friend you've not thought about in a long time, who's going to McDonald's as well. And that urge of trusting that gut takes you to the next step in your life. For example, you're thinking about going traveling. He's in McDonald's. He's thinking about you and your travels. And then you go there. He says, do come traveling with me. And then you go traveling. It's that puppy knowing that urge to drink milk, knowing where the nipple is. But how the fuck does he know? He just goes with the flow. Same as a maggot, just somehow knows where where the juices of the bin or something um, or the, <laughs> the mole underground knows where the hole is and how birds just know where to migrate to. It's that it's that urge and everyone has it, but yet no one has a fucking clue. And um yeah, it's just um that's just the way it is. It's that is that it's the way it is. Is this that human nature urge? Is our net that hu- the human life you know, it's how we're connected to nature, like the mole knows where to go even though it's blind. But that's an interesting. I like that. The puppies are, are blind when they're born, but they know to find the nipple. They just know. <laughs> and, and, then, and then and then the maggot just knows and knows wants to find some shit, some garbage, knows it. And we, we live a different life. We're not as simple, but like that. We have that tendency. And then it'll bring us to McDonald's to meet our friend so we can go on a road trip. Okay. It'll bring us to go drink water so that we don't have a headache for the rest of the day. So we can fucking do our shit. You know, it, it'll fucking do, yeah, anything. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't get very creative with the examples there, but that, that's how we're connected to nature. Like, we just have more of like a rainbow, rainbow array of like uh instances in our lives where we follow the urge whereas animals like you can always look at the same animal and they're always doing the same thing you know what i mean (laughs) that makes sense humans can go all over and have urges to do anything they're in their homes they're out out and about they're in nature they they have urges to do all these things connecting this all these languages to speak speak with they, they make little toys and shit they play with. You can just move, like, you just, like, have, a, have like, a a marble on your desk, and you have the urge to move it. Do that. That's your intuition. Literally. You move the marble, you put it on an, a block. Wow. That was the most useless fucking action ever. But if you felt... A desire, if you have an urge to do it, you got to do that because that gives momentum to your intuition, which is going to lead somewhere bigger than you can imagine. And that's that's what it is, man. It's like you say, Mom, I'm going to McDonald's. Okay. And then she goes, you coming home? <clears throat> no, I'm in Peru. What do you mean fucking Peru? I thought you were getting a cheeseburger. Well, I thought I was, but it turns out I actually went to McDonald's to go on a road trip. <laughs> and you ended up going on a fucking road trip and and the cheeseburger well there wasn't a cheeseburger it was just that was a meeting point for your aligned energy vibration um yeah shit like that happens all the time like end of the day if it makes you feel good do it you know sticking the thing in your ass putting the marble on that block if it made you feel good or better compared to if you didn't stick your finger in the ass or didn't you, you didn't put your, your marble on that block you've increased in feeling you've increased in vibration so that is what life is about all the planets up there they're constantly increasing in mass plants are constantly growing and getting bigger and dropping off acorns and seeds and growing we're no different we're just i suppose consciously aware of if i do this this will happen and if i don't it won't whereas a plant just does it automatically um yeah, if it increased that feeling of that marble, do it. Like, I do silly shit. Like, I just start making animal noises. And then until I shut up, I Same, bro. Same, just man. you feel good that they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you making animal noises? Like, meow, meow. <laughs> I do it. I walk past the cat and I go, meow, meow. Until it goes, meow. And I go, meow. <laughs> and now my, my dad's like, what the fuck are you doing? It made me feel good. 
And that's the reason for it. I've not progressed. I can't speak cat language. It made me feel good. The same as taking a piss outside as opposed to in my own house. It makes me feel free and part of nature. <laughs> There's no reason why I like pissing outside. It's just, I feel fucking fun. I know. <laughs> There's no reason in life. If it feels good, do it. As long as it's breaking any laws and hurting people, take a shit. Why not? 100%. 100%, man. Because you literally, you have to get yourself in a momentum. And like your momentum is unique. You're heading somewhere unique. You are, you are unique. So like when you do little steps, those little steps lead to bigger steps. And like, it, I'm not trying to make anyone do big things. You got to do that yourself. But like you move, you move, you move uh, your couch into the next, into the new area of your room. You got different you got different uh, feng shui, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You got, and it's inside you, and you go out, and you, <clears> feel, <throat> you feel different, but you feel like, you know, new you, you know? New you, you know? You know what I mean? So, we got to do that for ourselves. So, if we're, we're in a place where, like, uh, not very motivated, like, you can literally just do little random things that nobody else will give you any credit for doing. <laughs> Uh, but it will give you power. It will give you energy, give you momentum, just to feel better, just so you can meet uh, meet up with your life and uh, just be more like yourself. You know, like everyone, everyone has their own identity. Um, I have my own identity. I've switched my identity before. I personally don't think anybody anybody has like a set in stone identity i think we're always changing but we bring along with us like what feels the most authentic to ourselves and we're being the most authentic to ourselves um and we and we we all have this tendency of of being honest to ourselves we all, we all have this uh, tendency like like some people they're not as energetic but that's because they for themselves, they feel more true being, like, level, you know, like, calm, like, uh, you know, not not too excited, you know, not trying to, like, overexcite anything, just, like, come at life, because maybe what they've dealt with has been difficult, and so that they have to come with a, a you know, like a, what's it, what's it called? Just, like, a level mind. And uh, what's, the, what's it called when you're in the middle of something? Fuck, got the word. It's so simple. Neutral. They just have to come with a neutral uh, complexion. You know what I mean? They almost like can't smile. That, and I smile all the time. I, I do lots of things with my face. I do lots of things with my face. Sometimes my face gets stiff. And then so I do like some yoga with my face. You know what I'm saying? I got they you know called I mean? that Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> and then some people, like, I meet some people, and they don't smile even the slightest bit. And I'm, like, doing, like, voices and shit, like, really just trying to, like, really curb the enthusiasm, you know what I'm saying? And not even, like, a, a slight, like, oh, oh, you made me smile a bit. No, they're just, like, so neutral that I'm just, like, holy fuck, man. How do people live like that? But, <laughs> but like, no judgment. <laughs> I'm, although I'm sure they're judging me. Um, so I on got, that. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go on. Uh, so, um, for example, right, I find this fascinating because I look at myself um, from objectively and subjectively, like how I see it and how others will see it looking in. And when we say like how you can't understand people live like that or you want to change the world, well. You're not going to change the world. And when you say, how do people live like that? You're simply saying, I am this and they are not. It's like you're a Mexican tribe and I'm a Chinese tribe. Okay. We're on our own tribes. So there's no wrong or right. We've just come from different tribes. And I mean, you and me are part of the Awoken Enlightenment tribe. And you look at somebody who's not smiling and they are part of another tribe. So we're Chinese, Awoke. They're Mexican, not smiling. So you're like, man, how can you live like that? People need to people need to do this. Well, people aren't going to do this. There's fucking 8 billion humans on the planet. 
majority of them, 95% of them aren't going to ever know this. They're not going to do this. The people who will do this are the people who are on that journey like us. So we're speaking to them right now. That's only like probably not even 5% of human beings. But when we say people need to do this or you don't understand what people are like this, we're simply speaking to our tribe and our people on our mindset because no one else is going to ever see this. We're just a tribe in the middle of a rainforest, out of civilization, in civilization, if that makes sense. So you've got the African tribes people, which no one ever sees, but we are a tribe in civilization, which kind of limits our knowledge to only those who will understand it. And we're still around dumb people who don't get it, rather than all of us just on an island where we all are our spiritual selves. But so yeah, people don't smile, people don't get it. They're not gonna. It just fascinates me how when I see myself saying people need to do this, when I say people, I mean, as a preferred choice, people should be doing this, but 95% aren't going to do it. But the people who are listening, the 5% who are on this journey, I'm essentially speaking to them. People need to do this and then they will do that. But the other humans won't. That's all I have to say on that topic that I just find it fascinating how we say people or humans need to do this or we're all becoming more awoke who do you mean by we 8 billion humans 95 percent are not becoming awoke they're not waking up who's waking up we are waking up us spiritual beings and there's only about probably i don't know if you're lucky two million of them (laughs) that's just it it just fascinates me how people need to what we're saying is that we want to share our knowledge of people and if they knew this and their lives would be different but they're not going to listen then lives aren't going to change the small minority will take this and they'll evolve to the next step and this tribe will simply stay this tribe and the rest will just go about their day and you know sadly live their normal miserable lives and you can't help these people but as much as you want to that's that's basically it i think everybody's different i think um life is just so diverse I think there's more than 2 million. That was an example. I'm pretty sure there is, but that was just an example of <laughs> 8 billion, 2 million. That seems a difference. But yeah, there probably is. There, I don't think there's a billion. There is probably quite a lot. 50 million, maybe. It was just an example. Carry on. That's a good that's number. A lot of, that's a lot of podcasts I'm going to be doing. If there's 50 million of them reaching out to all of them. Fucking hell. I say people, and I think, I think it's said, people in their power is more powerful than a thousand people in, not in their power you know what i'm saying absolutely you know what I'm saying? individuals um so actually i'm curious uh just for fun like what's some what's a what's a thing or two that you think uh that is important for somebody who wants to like is it important for for people to do every day you know in their life like just a thing what, what's something that that's important to incorporate into your day for somebody who, who's uh you know living um wants to live their best life okay <clears throat> i noticed right that there's so many dramas of music certain people live in the head listen to heavy metal certain listen to jazz blues rock whatever yeah i've noticed the universal language is club music because every teenager Every teenager, fat, white, skinny, black, Down syndrome, albino, yeah? They all go clubbing when they are 18, and they've never felt so free. There's women, there's alcohol, there's something that happens when you hear music and you're in a club, and you feel part of this energy. Any single person, no matter what age you are, can put on a dance track, and you will go back to that time when you were at school, going clubbing with your friends. No matter what you like, no matter whether you listen to heavy metal, rock, blues, jazz, swing, opera, every person will vibe and dance to Tomorrowland music, Avinci, David (laughs) Guetta, like techno club music like you naturally will start to dance to that vibration everything vibrates right if you play that music you will want to dance and you will get those shivers and vibration and if you play that like david getter like titanium whilst you're having a shower you will start to dance you will get shivers and you will get out that shower like i felt like i've just been in a nightclub and now i'm off to work so what i went to club not necessarily stuff that was when you were younger, because times change and it all evolves, but play club 
music, the music that young people are listening to, doesn't matter how old you are, anywhere in the world, you will start to dance and you will feel good. And that will increase your energy no matter what you're going through, how much, what food you eat, where you are, how depressed you are. Everyone will vibe to dance music. And I've noticed that. I feel that. I feel that, man. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I like that. It's, just um, typical, it's like Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. They're just DJs that, you know, just play club music. But every fucking person in the world goes there and they all vibe on the same thing. That music piece and that, that music, that feeling of how the music makes you feel when it builds up, when the Avinci start, Vinci song builds up and then it loops and then you get to the bass line and that drop. And that build up again, it does something. It's like your energy is being reborn and it's hitting a peak and then it drops and it goes to the next level. I'm getting shivers when I'm saying this. Yeah. Everyone can connect to Tomorrowland music. And for those who don't know what Tomorrowland is, it's just the best DJs all around the world who are in harmony with love and music and vibes and that fucking good feeling. Anyone, anyone, old, young, anyone. But not anyone can connect to blues and jazz and rock and pop. That's what I've noticed. Okay, Put on that okay. shit and you'll feel good. I, I feel like going home and doing that. Uh, listening to I do it all the time. Have, have you gone in Tomorrowland? For real? When I have a shower, don't do it all the time. Because I like to have peace and silence sometimes. Because I realise that having yeah, music yeah. all the time just fucking does your head in. But occasionally... I put Tomorrowland on whilst I'm in the shower. You know, you've got the after movie and the um, the uh, the beginning movie. All the best parts of Tomorrowland or the hour compilation of the Vinci or the hour of David Guetta set. I just play that in the shower and I'm just dancing and having a good time in the shower. And before you know it, I've been in the shower for 20 minutes dancing. And in my head, I'm in Tomorrowland and I'm, um, he's going, put your hands up, put your fucking <laughs> hands up. And I'm putting my hands up and I'm feeling that energy. And I'm getting the tingles and I'm washing my armpit, washing my ass. And I'm just fucking dancing. And, and then my mum's like, stop fucking banging. And I'm just <laughs> in a different world. I have gone to that Tomorrowland place where I'm feeling fucking great. And I'm in the shower. And then I get out, do my deodorant, and I'm back to normal. But you take it takes your mind somewhere. Certain sound vibrations really do take your mind to a place where only music can take you. It just has the power. Alchemy. So literally, wizard, wizard sat down, and made that, made that spell, and then they put it into the, the universe that is the internet, and you can just listen to it. It's amazing. It's actually blessed. You can make your own music. You can feel similar, and uh, I mean, like these people made their own music and they share it with the world and they put a lot, lot into it. So yeah, man, it's so much quality. It's life. Um, so awesome, man. And it's true. You don't want to listen to music all the time. You want to, you want to actually practice going without music and, uh, just, um, just like getting used to like having that kind of like silence. Like it's okay to have the surroundings of where you live. If you live in the city, but you don't want to block out with the sounds of the city you don't need to do that you don't need to be anal about that but um you don't want to drown out your environment the ambience with music all the time you want to actually like you want to do it like sparingly you want to like do it to start your day maybe like go go all day and uh just while you're driving you know what i mean you don't want to do it all the time you want to do it like in, in small doses so that it's like that much more powerful because it like kicks dopamine out, like into you, and um, you wanna you wanna store the dopamine so that it feels that much more like mm, when you when you release it. So, but anyway. Asse <clears throat> essentially, right? Everything vibrates at five to eight hertz. It's the same as the Earth. It vibrates at the same thing. Animals do. We should do, but we don't because of just how life is, right? So some people have coffee to get them into that high state. People don't need coffee to get them into the high state. They just need to play 
club music in the morning. Now that sounds crazy <laughs> because you like can't play club really you can't play club music at six o'clock in the morning when your sister and your family and your wife or your girlfriend or your kids are sleeping. It's just not how it works. But True. when you play club music, your body will increase all this um, endorphins and serotonin and dopamine, right? As if you're in a club at six in the morning. You'll walk into the office and your friends will be your colleagues will be like, dude, like, why are you so awake? Oh, man, I was having a party. Party? I only woke up 10 minutes ago. What are you on about? No, honestly, I, I played music in the shower and I was dancing as if I was clubbing. Some people need coffee. Some people should just use music. Now, as you said, coffee is a drug. You get that high and the aim is to sort of have better sleep next time as opposed to just always relying on the caffeine. A music is a drug. If you take weed too much, it becomes your norm and you depend on that feeling. If you take cocaine, if you have sex, whatever, your body gets used to it. If you have crisps all the time, Chinese food, your body gets used to that feeling. And without it, you can't cope. But if you have it ever so often, you get that high, then you go back to reality. Music, for example. I remember when I was 21 and I learned all this stuff, right? Do things that make you feel good. I was listening to like Tomorrowland music all day to the point where I was on a fucking high all day. And then I went out to the pub of my friends who were just low in energy, who'd been to work and they were depressed. And I was so on a fucking high and positive. And, and I, wasn't in, I wasn't in sync with them. I'd go out, go to the supermarket. They will be just walking along, pushing their trolley in their low vibration, thinking, shall I get this or shall I get that? And I was so aware, like, I was on a fucking drug, but I wasn't. I was just high from music and on life. And I realized, shit, I can't live on this high music all the time because it's not reality. Like, it's a drug. You can't live on cocaine all the time because that's not normal. So, again, I had to cut back on the party music because... I wouldn't fit in anywhere. So, yeah, music is a drug like caffeine, like cocaine, like sex, like Chinese food. You use it to get you a high and go back to reality of just norm and silence. But in terms of the coffee thing, I recommend people dance if they can, if they haven't got neighbours and if they haven't got kids asleep or whatever. Before you go to work, don't have a coffee. Play Tomorrowland music. Tomorrowland music is the best DJs in the world playing all the best music. You walk into that office on a fucking high and you'll be so more productive because imagine you only wake up, say, four hours after you've got into the office. Your boss is going to think, what the fuck is going on with you? You've done all this in two hours. What the fuck? He's going to say, how have you done that? Music. He's going to let all of his employees listen to music, listen to Tomorrowland. They'll all be fucking dancing on their office tables and computers. And the office production is going to go way up. OK, they won't be making more coffee machines. They'll be fucking putting Tomorrowland music in the office and everyone's going to start having a party half an hour before you start work. He's going to be like, right, guys, 15 minutes party time and everyone's going to start partying. The boss is going to bring in his speaker. Everyone's going to start partying. They're all going to be on a high. Their brains are flooded with dopamine and fucking serotonin and they're ready to work. And now they're awake instead we're getting up at seven because the boss wants to get as many things done during the day. He thinks he's getting eight hours worth of stuff done. But really, he's only getting about five hours because people only wake up after their bloody lunch. And then actually, they've had their lunch, they've had their high. Now they have their sandwich and they drop and they're on the low again because of the carbs. So really, they're not productive. But simply listening to music is the power to getting your brain ready for a day if it's convenient. People are like, man, you're too much in the morning, too much energy for me. Like, I'm, you know, man, please, your knowledge, I can't cope. Playing the, like, you know, dance music. They're like, man, just turn it off, please. I can't cope. Well, actually, that's that's what you need. You need that feeling. Like, you need to get into that motion, and your body will naturally kickstart itself. Otherwise, yeah, you start playing Tomorrowland with someone who's just woken up. He's gonna. He's, he's going to fucking kill you. But if he understands why he should be listening to you, he's going to be on a high and he's going to feel great. And his body's going to start to vibrate in that motion of that music. Like that maggot will start to vibrate towards the bin and that, that fucking seed will start to vibrate towards the soil. And, and it, you'll increase in energy and it won't be a foreign feeling to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's so important. I think it's like, so past due that um, everybody, every corporation, every business, every family, whatever, 
the the they add to their every single day like what wakes a human being up what makes a human being healthy what like just like just healthy conscious like like movement conscious like life conscious like not just like we got to get the work done shit we got to complete the list like no we got to take care of ourselves we got to feel fucking good and do great work we got to do this great we got to feel fucking good about it we got to be proud of what we do you know what i'm saying like like fuck like meeting the, the criteria if we're not even do if we're not even proud of what we're doing like it's so past due that like all the whole world is is like just like putting quality over uh, quantity. <laughs> I have studied people, the ones you don't listen to music versus the ones you do. The productivity is fucking black and white. Um, I have noticed though, a lot of corporations are adding in plants and a sleep room like a little hammock bed they're getting the psychology of what makes a human being more productive they're letting them come in later so rather than nine o'clock ten o'clock that difference of coming in later going to bed a little later because you might be a night owl being able to just go and play ping pong like google and amazon and facebook what do they have they have slides they've got fucking nap dens they've got ping pong tables they're not stupid they've got gyms and stuff obviously some people they can't have treadmills in their little office of three men but the point is that if you understand what we need as basic humans sleep and nap just a power nap is significant to the structure of a brain being able to nap being able to go for a walk play ping pong i know when i play ping pong my brain is active it's stimulated now i can go back on that computer it's almost like people aren't in flow state in an office their brain is struggling. And just by having a little break, you can you can recharge. But what if your brain was in flow state because you've just played ping pong or you've had a dance with some friends in the next room with the music? What happens when people dance? They feel good. They smile. Everyone's just robots. That's not how it works. You just, like, people are spending, say, an extra 15 grand on another employee to get more done. Well, actually, you don't need to spend that 15 grand on that employee because that one employee could do it all himself if you allowed him to just go for a walk, play ping pong, come to, come up at 10 o'clock rather than 9 o'clock, play music. He could do twice as much in a day. You wouldn't need to spend that 15 grand on that person. Again, everything goes back to the core principles of of everything like disease don't make cancer cures understand why we get cancer unhappiness depression food negative energy that's why we always fight we always focus out rather than focus within um being happy and uh feeling free and doing these movements you know not being bogged down by having to get the work done and having nowhere to go like being able to go play ping pong, going, being able to go dance to music, stuff like that is literally strengthening your immune system. Yes. And they won't have time off as much with a cold. So again, it's all a vicious cycle. You don't allow this person to do this. They're going to be ill. So they're just going to not come in three days of the week. So you're fucked anyway. So why don't you just understand that if I'm fucked anyway, well, I might as well try it. Again, this thing about people are becoming more aware. Not everyone is. Some people are. And there is going to be significant results if you understand what does a human being need. A plus. Yeah, I Put think plants that's so in your important. room, you know. Open the window. Use I got, it. I just bought, like, in the past month, I just bought, like, four different salt lamps. Himalayan salt lamps. I have four. Wait, one, two, three, four different salt lamps in my room right now. And I love that shit. Good. You know, you know what they do, right? Yeah, they just like reverse what the the blue light from the screens do. So I just like lay in bed, have all four of my Himalayan salt lamps on, like for like an hour. I'm just like, ah, and I'm good. It feels nice. The plants too, man. I, I've been going for walks in uh, forests, abandoned forests. Yes, about. there's nothing. <laughs> 
better than an abandoned building, forest or city or town, like, you know, abandoned buildings online. Um, there's just something about the energy of something that was so active and people were there. And then you just see their leftover acts and like, what was he doing when he left that? Did he plan to come back? Did he die? Did he forget? Tuning into that person's thought process is amazing, like a leftover wheelbarrow. Um, <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like so interesting yeah. thinking about Egyptians when they wrote this on the pyramid. What were they thinking? It's just oh, okay. amazing. Oh, okay. Plants. I think that people should get a fish. Just a fish bowl and a goldfish. Okay. Something about just that little fish in that bowl swimming around and you're just watching it like it's just, it's some, it does something to the mind. Just a little fish swimming in that bowl. Just, just a fish. You know, plants are good. Himalayan lamp, salt lamp is good, but having fish, just seeing them swim around, it's very therapeutic. It's very nurturing. You could say, you know, it's it's not fair putting little goldfish in a bowl that's big. I mean, <laughs> that's besides the point. It's just <laughs> a, a, a little forget that. Forget that. A little it's fish you. in a tank. It's about you. <laughs> yeah, a little fish in a tank, right? Just that's seeing it swim that. around, it's amazing. Feels good. I need. To, I want to get a fish, but there's no room in my room. It's a tiny room. <laughs> Having a puppy, that works. Or a kitty cat. I like those. What I really <laughs> want is a little marmoset monkey, and I could take it a walk with me, oh, just on my back, nice. hanging on my back, and just take it for walks. I can see that. Going around a shopping center, and I've got this monkey on my back. Amazing. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah everyone's smiling and love and unfortunately they're getting their cameras out but they're still happy and like embracing that moment so you know you can change people's lives just by walking with a parrot on your shoulder because they're not used to seeing it and it brightens people's day and they speak about how there's this guy with a parrot on his shoulder and and you feel good um just simple shit like that because they're not used to seeing it walking your rabbit on a lead they're not used to seeing it walking your cat on a lead who says you can only walk dogs Put your fucking cat, walk your goat, you know, walk with a parrot on your head. I was no joke of a lie. I was in a health spa, my gym, David Lloyd. I was outside in the spa area. This pigeon just landed on the table. I don't know whether it was a wild pigeon or a, someone owned it. But I said, come here. The pigeon landed on my arm and it walked up and it was on my head. So there's these people in the jacuzzi and in the sauna just relaxing and they look outside and there's a guy with a fucking pigeon on his head. They must have been thinking, what the fuck is going on? Why? Why is there a pigeon on that man's head? Not only why is a pigeon on his head, but why is he allowing that pigeon on his head? Why is he not like said, fuck off? So I, I remember looking at someone in the jacuzzi and she was thinking, oh, my God, that's so fucking weird. What is going on? But it just it landed on my lap. It crawled on my arm. It walked up and it landed on my head. And I was just there with a fucking pigeon on my head. And then the staff came out and they were looking at me like, what the fuck is going on? But the point is, it created a memorable experience. You then told your friends and your colleagues, oh, my God, there's somebody outside with a pigeon on his head. And you can't believe what you're seeing. And it makes you feel like it's something different. Like you're not used to, not used to that. Like, a, like music in the morning. You're not used to it. But it gives you that feeling of, oh, it's like, it's like having a wank and orgasming. Your body's flooded with all these endorphins. You feel good. Weird is good. So that's why sex is so powerful. No, no one really has sex anymore, especially when you're married. But it does shit to your body. You don't <laughs> give a fuck. If you have sex, you don't give a fuck about anything. If you exercise, you don't give a fuck about anything. And the two things that no one really does anymore, exercise and sex, because life just takes over and you're not in the mood to do it. Actually, that is what you need to do. Fuck and exercise, and you'll see the difference. <laughs> I agree. I agree. You got to push yourself further than ever before. And, like, that just feels so good. When you exercise, I was just going to that. You exercise, you push yourself, oh, your body expands, and then when you're done, it like slowly comes back down, and that coming back down feels so good. Like that's not scientific at all, but like you expand your body, and then it slowly settles back down like silly putty, and that feels so good, and you got like a glow on you, 
you know what I mean? Because like every bit, every bit of your blood cells and every bit of your cells have been working. Also a thing that improves your immune system. So important. Immune system is everything. Like if you live your life the way you want to live it, your immune system will be good. If you block yourself from doing what you want to do, if you don't do that little urge, if you don't put that marble on the block because you had the urge, if you don't do it, that lowers your immune system. Literally, you want to follow the you want to follow the the path that is being made for you because it is for you, it is for your well-being. It is so that you can live the life that you actually want to live. You know, if you don't, if you're living a life right now that you don't even like it, you don't even want to live this life, shit. Start following these little messages that you get from like a desire. Like you have this desire to go do this random thing. Fuck what anyone else says. If you think it's silly, go do it. Laugh at yourself. It'll feel good. It's meant for you. This little silly random thing, this weird thing is meant for you. And it's not weird. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. Okay? It's not weird. People, the people who think that eating eggs at night are weird. I'm just kidding. I don't know if you've seen that commercial. I don't know how the fuck I've seen that commercial. I don't watch TV. (laughs) But, (laughs) but like, yeah, just like people who think things are weird and they're like, oh my God, it's so strange. How can I do Those people are fucking weird. Weirdos. Go do weird shit. Enjoy yourself. Feel silly. Wake up. Every bit of you, the deepest part of you, but because you're you're out in the open, you're like naked on a plank. Do it. Go do that for yourself. Don't hurt anybody. Don't hurt yourself. (laughs) Uh, But go and like break the the imaginary rules that you might have in your head because. That's going to feel amazing. That's going to make you feel healthier. That's going to make you feel more like yourself. And that's going to open up more options for you in your life. It's going to be a beautiful thing. And it always is. And that's why I like to do that every day. And I see that you do that every day. And I like that. I appreciate that in you, man. Yeah, it's not about whether the marble has any purpose balancing on that rubber. That's not what it's about. It's about just taking action on your gut. Because it's just your whole life ahead of you. If you don't think, oh, what's the point in doing that marble? What's the point in going out for dinner when there's food in the fridge? What's the point of getting an escort when, you know, I could fuck my mate? It's just like, what's the point (laughs) in doing anything? What's the point of going for a walk if I already went on one? So it's about the urge, going with that flow. And if you always act on the urge, you'll always be doing something and creating and things will manifest. Like, I always go on an afternoon walk and I go on an evening walk. Why? When humans are asleep, the energy is different in the evening. People say to me, why do I like the evening? Why am I always going out for a walk when everyone's in bed? But mum's like, no, it's 11 o'clock. What are you doing going for a walk? She doesn't get it. It's just something about when there's less human energy out there, and it's me and the moon and the nature. I feel so powerful, like how no one's there but for me. I feel like I own the world. I can't explain it. Um, human consciousness is down and my energy is allowed. To, I can admit. So I ask the universe for something. I can go straight to the moon and the source. Whereas if people are awake, their energy is interfering and my energy won't get there as quick. So if I go out on a nighttime walk, I look at the moon, it's bright. I say moon. I am ready for wealth and everything that's coming to me. Make my dreams come true. I want the talk show and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. What I will say to you is that um, I learned this. I'm free. People say I'm weird. I used to say, no, you're fucking weird. To me, that was holding on to negative energy of how they made me feel. So when you were saying, no, you're fucking weird, that tells me that that's the inner child of back at school when they said you're weird and you're saying, no, you're weird. It's just like, understand these people are not like you. They're not weird. You're not weird. It's just they follow patterns that you do not follow. So it's just what they're used to seeing. So be yourself and eat cheese at nighttime or whatever. Like I have super noodles and hot dogs at nighttime and I just (laughs) eat what the fuck I want. There's no rules. Like I'd have an egg when I want a fucking egg. But rather than saying, no, you're weird, that tells me that it's almost like there's a bit of negative energy in you from imagining those people saying you're weird so let it go it's almost like when I was at school I said to myself when I come back in 10 years in my Ferrari you'll regret it 
I don't think that anymore. I now think about it as I'm not going to turn up in my Ferrari. I turn up in a white van because I forgive you. I'm not, I don't hold grudges. Um, that's just what came to mind when you said, no, you're weird because it's almost like you've not, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but awareness that they're not the same. And it's not that it's bad or good. It's just you've evolved. You are the better human. You're the most luckier human out of the two. So rather than know you're weird, that's projecting negative energy. You are the one who's got the fortunate lifestyle. So I forgive you. And I understand you don't understand why I can't have an egg at night time because most of your people don't have eggs. That's fine. And they don't <laughs> no. get it. So you, so you flip it. that You're the lucky one as opposed to fuck you, weirdo. You're the weird one. Yeah, that's, you're that's, right. that's what that you're came right. to mind. I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you saying that. It is true, man. Uh, there is, I, I do hang on to some negativity. I think like it's really important to let go of that. I think it's really important to like let, let go of that. Um, but you know, like everybody has a little bit of ne- negativity, you know. <laughs> but um, it's true, man. And I really appreciate you pointing that out because it's true. Because like, I don't want to call anybody weird, but. I do have a little bit of negativity in me. I do end up like I get it poked by some people, you know, like, and it, and I get like fucking. I start having thoughts like "fuck you," <laughs> but uh, then I'm just like, "Hey, there's no point in that." Like, literally, does not help me. But um, it's true. I really what really what I am trying to say is I'm inviting all of you, anybody listening, to go and do what you think other people might judge you for, which is weird. Don't hurt, hurt yourself. Don't hurt anybody. But, like, go and do what you think is weird. If you have the urge to go do it, like, don't block yourself. Like, if you think, ha, that would be so funny. But I'm not going to do that. Do it. Do it. It'll be so liberating. And you'll see why you had that urge. You got to follow these urges. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Thank uh, you for saying what you said. I notice patterns in people. And I know that there is, say, you know, star signs, there's different categories. So the traits of an Aquarius, traits of a Pisces, you notice them in people. And whether you agree, realize it now, you might be sleeping tonight, replaying what I've said and being like, fuck you, he doesn't know what he's on about. And then later on, you might be like, actually, he was right. Or you might be like, do you know what? He was right. I'm going to say it. Take it how you want. I find through analyzing also through my own experience that having things like long hair and a beard is hiding, it's an identity. It's, it's hiding an identity of being true to who you are. And I know you've probably heard this from every Tom, Dick and Harry and you might be no. like, fuck you, you don't understand. No. And everyone is different, everyone involves. But stereotypically, I've noticed that, and, and it's interesting because you said I will never shave this off. I was that same no. person. Am I... And my dad used to say to me, you're hiding behind your identity. You know you're different. And so you want to purposely promote your difference as if to say, fuck you, I'm different. So having long hair in the in Nando's and stuff was me saying, I'm not the same as you. I am better than you. But it's not that I'm better than you. I feel I can offer more to the world. So you go through that transition of fuck you to, OK, I'm really at peace with myself and my, my dad, he's always right. He was always right. Every time he said something, you're hiding behind yourself. Every time I wore different color socks on purpose, every time I would wear a bandana or wear a color hairband or whatever, have long rainbow hair, he would always say, you're trying to, you're hiding behind an identity. It's almost like if I shaved my hair and shaved my beard, I look in the mirror and I don't truly like the person that I am. Now, it's interesting because we go through stages where, you know, you are, a positive conscious being and love and be happy and do what the fuck you want. And then there's people who are unhappy and they're not doing what they want. And then there's people in the middle who are kind of on that transition between they are happier than most people, but there's still 10% of them that are unhappy. And it's like, what is that 10%? I've got a friend, a best friend, right? Who's traveling the world. The last thing I said to him was, because we fell out and I was pissed off with him because I, I love him as a friend, but I've grown up with him and I know his pain. I know where the real pain comes from. He doesn't know. And every time I speak to him about it, 
he runs away and we aren't friends anymore because he knows that I know the real reason why he's continuously traveling. He's with all these positive, happy, energetic people like yourself, free, all about the vibe and the traveling. But I know and everyone's situation is different for him. It's him and the fact that he never felt loved enough by his parents because he was this, he was a third child. He was the younger child. His mum had two children. They got all the attention and he was just forgotten about. school. My parents made me food. My parents picked me up. His dad was very lost and insecure. He saw that. His dad was very religious. He preached God and Christianity to him. And he was kind of lost between finding his own identity, not really feeling this love from his mum and having to do his own shit. And his dad just also lost, but preaching this religion to him. And he was like this, this lost figure. And he never knew who he was. And he became Christian. And I used to say to him, tell me why you believe in God. Like, tell me, does that make sense? He got, Ollie, stop it. I can believe what I want to believe. And that's fine. Stop telling me what to do. And it used to get to him. Cut a long story short. He started to fall out with his dad and how his dad was making him become religious. He grew up. He went traveling. He came back home. I said, let's hang out. He went traveling again. And I basically said, listen, mate, you fuck off and find yourself in Australia and come back to me when you realize you're always here. What that's saying is that he's he's running away from his real self. He's He always goes out and fucks people and dates people. He's never had a relationship. It's this feeling about being abandoned as a kid, how when you have sex with this person, she's not there the night afterwards because you've got that chase, that I can get any girl, that chase, like a drug and you get it, and then she fucks off. So it's this chase again, and she fucks off. It's almost like you you never have this thing there, like the mother of not, been there for you he never had a relationship and it's almost like he would always cheat because he's so used to that feeling of chasing and and not getting it and going that it always lies down to something else now you might be an exception you might be aware of this you could have a similar story it might be a parent it might be a sibling it might be an ex-girlfriend everyone has a different story but it always goes down to the same thing could you look yourself in the mirror and most people use it specifically, but people listening, can you look yourself in the mirror, shaving everything bare people, women who have to wear makeup all the time. It's the same thing. They look in the mirror. They so used to seeing the makeup on their face. They don't like who they are. Why? Why do you not like who you are? You go back to when you were younger and it always comes down to being at school where people used to bully you whatever and then you all make up and then the boys gave you attention and then you feel like oh and then you're the one who gets pregnant first because you're fucking everyone and shit like that it comes down to can you truly look yourself in the mirror bare shaved nothing no makeup no beard whatever and love who you are if it's yes grow your hair wear makeup because you can choose to do that but if for example you can't go out without any makeup or you can't shave that beard why why can't you there's a reason go back to when you're a child what happened? Was it people at school never understood you? And then you create this identity, as my dad says, it's a persona. Hair, long hair. Um, I used to wear, you know, different color socks and hair bands. And I was always different. I always dyed my hair. And he was right. I hid behind a persona of being different. So I promoted being different. You look at Lady Gaga. She was always wearing silly steak outfits and stuff. Um, Katy Perry. She had this pink hair. You look at a lot of celebrities, right? You realize that they all made it because they had this like persona, which made them stand out. And then they make it in their career and everyone knows who they are. And then they sort of go down to being normal. Look at Katy Perry now. Look at Rihanna. Look at Lady Gaga. They're just normal. So you hide behind this identity of I am different. Then you make it. But like me with the long hair, I didn't realize that that was me then. I got through the school days and the college days of being bullied and being different. That was my identity. It got me there. Those people don't exist anymore. But my hair does. And that's what I said. I shaved it off. Don't rule out the fact that you'll get the urge because what I'm saying may trigger now. It may trigger later. But the fact that you said you'll never cut it off, I will say to anyone, ask yourself why. There's always an underlying reason why for any human being, not just you and not just your beard, for women and their makeup. Women always have to wear high heels tight clothes it's a way of just this this attention this focus and once you are once you can go through that cycle of cutting your hair and not wearing high heels and makeup it's a choice 
But if you can't do it, like my friend, why does he always travel? Ask yourself this. It goes back to when he was abandoned. Everyone's different. But that's all I want to say. It might resonate, it might not. But if it doesn't to you, people listening, it might do. That's why it's not specifically personal to you. <laughs> that's true. I, uh, I once read a book <clears throat> and it told me to find a picture of myself as a child. Interesting. I know where you're going with this. And it told me to just reflect on the picture. Just like go. I went on a bus. This was like three years ago. I went on the bus to go downtown. And um, I just looked in the book. So people thought I was reading the book. But I was just looking at a picture of myself when I was like seven. And it literally looks like I was just crying. It looks like my childhood was just like this sad. <laughs> no, but like, it's a picture of me crying. But like, I'm done crying and now I'm just like purple around my eyes. I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> I'm just like, shit, man. Like, what? why am I crying? <laughs> like, I barely ever look at myself uh, or pictures of myself as a kid. So th this was like the first time I've seen myself as seven since I was seven. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at back at this picture of the young me. I'm looking at how he has like short ginger hair. He has uh, the blue See, eyes that I that I got. He has like this shape of lips, I think. Yeah, this is shape of lips that I, I got. Like the nose that I got. No, no like age creases you know what i mean just like straight kid you know straight healthy kid he's crying so i'm trying to like sympathize with like this child that was me and then i'm reflecting and the the bus ride's like 40 minutes so i'm there for a while and i'm just like looking at it and i'm taking in like this is def this is me that's crazy and i was getting like an epiphany of like, I literally transformed from this child, this, that child, right here, this, right here. I didn't have a beard at the time, so I'm like touching my face and shit. I'm like, that's that, that's that. That's crazy. It was like a really eye-opening um, experience, and I literally let go of this tension in around my eyes just from looking at at the photo of myself as a kid to just be like you know what like i'm having these like squinty eyes i'm having like these like you know this like uh, just like holding this tension in my face but like look look at this picture of this kid that's the shape of my face that's literally the shape of my face but like if i let go of that tension and then I, I like, I, I probably like cried or something. I probably like teared up. I was like, I was like, huh. I was like, ah. I was like, ah. like, I can't believe this. And um, just since then, um, I actually went through a, a long phase of awakening my inner child, uh, just like remembering that I, that I like was a fucking child. And uh, just like really, just re revisiting that, and like like honoring that, fucking honoring the child that started this journey. You know what I'm saying? And I got all spiritual about it. And um, for a while, I I really did. I really got got like younger. I felt like I looked younger than I did when I was like when I was 24, 25, 26. I looked younger than when I was 23, 24. You know what I mean? Because I went, I, I like, I went, I, I looked at this picture. I thought about it. I realized I don't need to hold my face in this way that, like, makes me feel like I'm an adult. Isn't that weird? And then it literally just, like, let, released tension in my brain. And it helped me feel more, like, youthful. And uh, I, I explored that. I explored that a lot. And then um, it also helped that there were, like, little kids in my life, too, that I, I had my little niece and nephews 
I could do like finger painting with. And I would hang out with my little four-year-old nephew and I'd start like saying shit that he does, you know? I'd have like, start having like mannerisms with my little four-year-old. <laughs> and it would just make me feel good. You know how like making animal sounds ma- makes you feel good? Like I would just say shit like... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was say shit that that my four like my four year old uh, have nephew would ask a question with like this enthusiasm that is just like you just like life is good and then I I would start like literally talking like that <laughs> like it wasn't like goo goo gaga stuff but it was like just this fucking pure enthusiasm about like have, being curious about shit and like I, I would pick that up anyways I think it's real yeah. I think it's really um, revitalizing to like revisit your childhood, uh, move through the darkness, do that shadow work, like honor that kid that you you were you are that kid that is you, like like go back and like love that kid that the way that your parents couldn't. Likewise, their parents couldn't love your parents. Your grandparents couldn't love your parents the way that they needed. Because we're not perfect. This is almost like a science experiment. Okay? We have to go and we have to, like, grow up, mature, and take the responsibility of being our own parents. Parent ourselves. Love ourselves. Um, and maybe that way we'll be better parents than our parents were. Like I'm definitely dedicated <laughs> to being better, a better parent than my parents were. <laughs> no offense to my parents, love you guys, but I used to say I hate you guys. You know what I mean? When I was in my rebellious phase. Yes. I used to be like fuck you guys. But like, as I grow up, like I gotta love them. I don't know. I don't. Maybe it's even peer pressure. I got no. I love them. And that's just me. That's just my heart. Like, some people, maybe, like, their relationships with their parents have just gone over the line. They literally cannot go. Like, they can't even shed, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of love to their parents, you know? Because some people, like, have been through shit. But me, I can forgive my parents. Even if they did some whack-ass shit, I can forgive them because they, they didn't know any better. And like I'm gonna know better. It's my that's my choice. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Just out of interest, when's your birthday? I'm a Aquarius Capricorn, January. January the what? Twenty second. Two two. Right, cool. I'm January twenty eighth. Um oh, so yeah, this this well, is the this is the thing, right? Anyone can do this at home. If you want to know if you have pain and trauma and misery and suffering within you from childhood you may not know because it could be so long ago but there is one thing you can do or anyone can do to to ask themselves or to get the information of am i happy or is there something in me that i've not dealt with all you have to do is look at an old picture of you at school why school because school is the time where there's the enormous pressure where you're very unhappy so you look at an old picture of you at school and you will either think, oh, look how, look how young I look. Or, oh, my God, look at my hair. Or you won't like looking at that photo and you'll be like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it's in the past. Forget about it. What would I think about stuff in the past? If you act like that, there's, a, there's, there's problems. If you look at a picture and you don't like who you were then and you don't like looking at that, so you put it down, there's a good, good chance that you have unresolved issues within you, through parents, through siblings, through friends, for your own identity. For example, right, an example, someone leaves school at 18, they grow a beard and they're 40. And it's like, well, and they just always had a beard. That's just because why change something if you haven't got a need to change it, right? Why would you get a new couch if you've got a couch? Often we evolve from a thought, one thought, and you just continue that thought. And there's always a reason why something happens. Like, why did I suddenly start to grow my hair? Because I wanted to connect with nature. And then I'm in London and I'm, I'm, I'm different. So it's like, well, why did I do it? Often we just continue paths. 
But if somebody can't look at a photo and be like, oh, I love that person, there's a, there's something in them that they can't see in that photo that makes them realise and think back to who that they were. It's almost like, for example, when a parent passes away, it's too painful to grieve. So they just get on with their life, keep busy and stuff. And 25 years later, they still haven't grieved from their parent because they just... That, that that day of not grieving and doing something to avoid that, 20 years passes and they still haven't addressed it, but they're still the same person as they were a day after their parents passed away. They're still that person, even though they have a beard and even though they're 50 and they've got kids and whatever, they're still that person. So anyone can see if they've got unresolved pain by looking at an old picture and then realising, why can't I look at that? Go within yourself, go back to that child and how you felt. And you can heal yourself by simply going through the emotion that you didn't go through then because it was too painful. You have to cry and you've got to go through that thing that person said to you and how, you know, but that's healing. Like when you said you looked at your child picture and you saw the squinty eye shit and you let go, like the pressure in your eyes that you saw in that photo was stored in your head still from when you were a child and you weren't aware and you saw it, you were aware and you let it go. And now that energy has been lost around your eye. So you look younger. Anyone can heal themselves just like that. But everyone's got pain. I had pain and suffering and I ran from bullying my whole life. I never, ever accepted the fact that I was bullied by every single fucking person I ever met because I was always the one who had the upper hand. But it got to me. And actually what's interesting is, is I never saw the bully nine years after I left school. I grieved and I went over and I forgave him and I went through the shit I went through. I saw him three days in a row and I never saw him again. Now, that is powerful because I was, I was at a mental blockage for nine years. Never saw this kid. I saw him three fucking days in a row. Once in the supermarket, once at the job center and once walking across the road. And I've never seen him for nine years. So just by going over in my brain, the shit that I was, I never faced. I let it go and I freed myself just by grieving the thing I never grieved. Now, when you think about a parent passing, for example, it hurts. Grieve once, cry, release those toxins, and you will feel free. But if you don't, that's going to be in you for the rest of your damn life. And your kids will see the fact that your children, your kids will see the fact that your parents don't face issues and they will become the same. And they will learn daddy doesn't cry, so they're not going to cry. And it's the same cycle going over and over and over again. That's why it's so important to, to free yourself because, you know, as you said, we want to be better parents than our parents. But we have to learn the things that our parents didn't do. If my parents didn't cry, I never saw my father cry. Why? He never had any issues because he faced the ball. That was why. And when he did cry, I realized, OK, well, it's not that he's holding shit in. He just has a very happy, positive life. You look at some people why they don't cry. They don't allow themselves to feel emotion and that blocks them. And it's like a mental blockage just by crying releases you. It's phenomenal what happens when a person cries. I never cried my whole life. And then I grieved 21 years of all the shit that I went through in one go. I remember in my bed, going over the bullion, letting go of my father in terms of I was becoming a man and he wasn't there in the way that he was. I went back to my grandma dying, all the stuff that I just ran from, cried one after the other in my bed, crying, grieving and going back to what they said and saying goodbye to them in my head, something I never did. I freed myself. It's phenomenal crying. It's the it's so powerful crying. Are you there? Hello? Okay, I think um his phone's died. Um so I'm just gonna hold on a little bit to see if he comes back. I think his phone's died. If it has died, I'll end this podcast. But I'm just going to wait for a few minutes. Most people's phones, they last about an hour. Because this has gone on for about an hour and a half, the chances are his phone's died. So I'm just going to hold on for a little bit and see if he comes back or if the recording ends.
Okay, his phone has died. Podcast is over. In fact, there's a possibility that he can join the call by clicking on the link. So, viewers, hold on. I'm going to hope that he puts his phone on charge and then he can continue because he can join the call, which I've just realized you can do.